Hi guys, this is Miss Myers, and I've already started on my two-point perspective project, which is our space house. Um, so for beginning art, we do it in space, so you don't have to worry about the horizon. And I've already put my dots in. Here's one vanishing point. Here's the other vanishing point. I've circled them so it's easy for you to see. I'm even going to label it for you. All right. Some people would call this the VP left and this one the VP right. Okay, just in case we need that. We're doing two-point perspective, which means that you're looking at the corner of a building or a house or a box. Okay, so we're going to start with the corner. And I'm going to have one going below the line just for our little outbuilding. All right, so I've created a corner. It doesn't have to be big. There's no specific measurement. It's whatever you choose to do. Try different things. Play around with it. When we do two-point perspective, the end points of our corner that we created have to go to each vanishing point on the left and the right so that we can create the walls that are disappearing into the distance. Okay? I'm gonna, on this one, I'm going to draw them all the way to the vanishing point so you can see it. On the next one, I may not take them all the way. Okay, so now I have two walls going all the way into the distance. I probably don't want my box or my building to be that big. So I'm going to use a parallel line that's parallel to the original corner in order to shorten the box into a smaller size. So, sometimes I like to use the width of my ruler, so I'm sure that it's absolutely parallel. You could also measure out the same distance and do it more than once and connect those dots. Remember, always measure twice, draw once. You can also use your ruler to eyeball it against another line so that you could move it and see how close to parallel you are. If you start to get like this, you're not parallel anymore and your box is going to look wonky. Okay. Now that I have the ends of my walls created, I'm going to erase just a little bit of this so that we can see easier. There's one wall. Here's the other wall. In order to create the top of my box, because we're not just going to have two pieces of paper sitting there, then I'm going to connect this point to the vanishing point on the right. And I'm going to connect this point to the vanishing point on the left. That noise you hear behind me is Nicole. She's here after school learning how to do this too. She might have a question later, so be prepared for that. So now you can see that I've free created a box. It's like a platform or a stage because I made it sort of short. I can erase all these extra lines. I can erase some of my little things that I drew to help you guys. Okay. Now, this is one below the horizon. When you have one below the horizon and its corner does not cross the horizon or your viewpoint line, you're always going to see some of the top. If I were to put one above the horizon, you would always see some of the bottom. And I'm going to do one of those quickly here. Remember, you could start with the corner. It connects to your vanishing point. Oh, that was not straight. Don't forget to use your ruler skills and make sure you hold your ruler nice and tight so that you have a straight line. That's me being a little bit speedy and trying to race. All right, so now I have my two walls. I'm going to cut them off so that they're parallel. How did you get the top walls up here? I've, I connected this point mm -hmm. to this vanishing point, and I connected this point to this vanishing point. 
if you connect it to the wrong vanishing point, you just end up con continuing that line. So you'll know when you line up your ruler if you've got it right or not. Okay. okay. Okay, so now I've ended my box. Now, like I was just telling Nicole, I'm going to connect this point to the opposite vanishing point. And then I'm going to do the same with the other corner. You don't have to take it very far. If you take it as far as that edge right there, you know you've made it because that corner can't be way past here. And you only need until they cross. So you can stop drawing your line once they cross and erase your extra. Okay, I'm going to do one more box in the center at covering the horizon line so you guys can see what that looks like. Um, for our project, we'll have at least four of our boxes touching so that you could move theoretically from one box to the other without having to go outside. Okay, and that's why I call it the space house because I just like to remind people that if you had to move from one box to the other, like say I needed to be in this box but I was up here and we were in space, you have to put your space suit on. What a pain in the tush. Nobody wants to do that. So I'm going to create one in the middle and you'll need to figure out how to get yours connected to each other so that you don't have to put your space suit on to get your toothbrush from here to go to the garage here. Whatever. Okay. So I'm going to quickly do one in the middle. Because it's in the middle, we're not going to have to create the top or the bottom. We're just going to create the two walls and cut them off parallel to end our box. Okay. So now I have my box. It's over the horizon so you don't get to see the top and you won't get to see the bottom. This one is considered at the horizon. Okay. So I have one below the horizon or the eye level, one above the eye level and one at eye level. In just a moment on our next video we're going to take this building or box that's at eye level and we're going to create a pitched roof for it so that it looks like your traditional house similar to what you see um, elementary students draw when they have their family standing outside and they're in front of the house with the pretty door and the tree next door. All right, so some of my students don't like the very modern space house and they want to have a roof on their house. So in our next video, we're going to try that. Stay tuned. I'm going to work from this drawing and continue on.